Welcome to my Fire Emblem Engage Chloe guide. So in this guide, I'm going to help you make Chloe a good unit and also go over her pros and cons and some basic information about the unit. All right, so to begin, let's talk about her passive. So Fairy Tale Folk is arguably one of the better passives in the game. It increases her damage by two if there's a male and female ally that are within two spaces of her, which is a pretty easy condition to meet. If you want to consistently meet this condition, uh, run Male Allure on Flyer or Rosado, and also run Ivy or a second female Flyer. And it's pretty consistent, pretty easy to meet. This allows her to get her damage bonus whenever, you know, she's with her flying squad. Or she can just kind of hang out with the team, and you can just kind of have units hanging around. So that's the easiest way to meet her condition. Okay, so Chloe in my opinion, is one of the best units in early to mid game. And she does have like damage issues to some degree very late on, but this can be mitigated with either stat boosters, uh, changing her to Wyvern. Uh, you can give her upgraded weapons. So there's, there's definitely ways of dealing with this. It's not like she's going to stop dealing damage, uh, but yeah, so as long as you know how to mitigate these problems, you can easily keep her relevant throughout the end game. So one thing I started doing in my third and fourth playthroughs is I'm running Momentum instead of Canter. And the reason for this is it's tons of free damage. On a six move unit, you can consistently get plus four to plus six damage. You get plus four if you are even next to an enemy because you can move around them and it counts, like it stacks the damage. So if you are standing next to an enemy, you can go up a tile, uh, right two tiles, then down a tile, and that's plus four damage from momentum. So you, at minimum, get plus four damage, and at maximum on the flying class, you get plus six. Now, if you can use boots on the unit to increase its movement, or if you throw some other kind of thing that increases movement on it, it will also allow you to hit further out and therefore hit harder on your first hit. Uh, but if you run Sigurd, this becomes redundant. So if you're going to run Momentum on a unit, you should not run Sigurd on that unit. You should run it on someone else. Uh, but that being said, Momentum does help keep her damage high. Uh, all right, so let's talk about her growth rates. So let me just pull those up. Okay. I actually usually have it open like 100% of the time for some reason. All right, here we go. Chloe. So... She has 75% health, 25% strength, 50% magic, 40% dex, 55% speed, 30% defense, 25% res, 25% luck, 5% build. And then if we go to class growths uh, on Griffin Knight, which is what she's on right now, she gains 10% more strength, putting her at 35%. She gains 15% more magic, putting her at 50%. Uh, she also gains 15% dex, 20% speed, putting her at 75% speed, and 15 res and lock. So she ends up being insanely fast, and her strength growth is on the lower side, but because of her passive and because of other passives in the game, as well as specific emblem rings she can run, you can keep her damage quite high. Uh, so for example, if you run an emblem ring like Ike on her, and you get the bond level to 20, I think she gets like plus five or plus six strength from Ike, which drastically <laughs> improves her damage. So there's there's little tricks you can use to fix her damage if you find that her damage isn't that high uh, end game. Uh, but that being said, her growths are geared towards speed. She can be an effective magic user, uh, or not an effective magic user. She can be a decent, actually she could be a sage now that I think about it. She has the speed and the magic growth. Like she has 35%. Or is it 30? Yeah, no, it is 35. She has 35% base magic growth, so she, you actually could throw her on Sage, and she would be a decent Sage. Uh, however, if you want her on Griffin Knight, she can use Flame Lance or Leaven Sword, both of which are fine. Uh, in this case, she's just a Spear Griffin, but I could arguably put her on Leaven Sword, and eventually her magic growth will slowly creep up to her strength growth. Her strength is still higher at base, so even though she has better magic growth rate, it's still going to take longer before you see a flip, like before you see the magic overtake the strength. Uh, so aside from that, uh, how much investment is required to make her good early to mid game? I would say almost none. All you have to do, and it's very simple, is you hand her a steel lance. 
and then you put Sigurd's engraving on it, and then you upgrade it to plus one as soon as you can, and then plus three as soon as you can, which happens a few chapters, you know, like before chapter 10. So with just the Steel Lance with Sigurd engraving on it, she will one round most things because of her high speed, and because she one rounds most enemies outright, she will power level herself effortlessly. So if you just position her well and just avoid her getting killed by archers, which is something I'm so used to, it's second nature, but I understand some people have a hard time positioning flyers. Uh, but if you can just have her either dive things that can one round her, like archers, and get rid of the threat in of itself, or just have her kill slower enemies, she will snowball in early game and can probably... I actually, I could say she easily could solo most of those maps after a certain point before, like, Chapter 10. There's definitely maps where she killed, like, like on, um, what was it, Anna and Jean, in, uh, Jean's Paralogue, she was just, like, soloing a ton of things. And then on Chapter 7, she was soloing a bunch. She, like, sat in the middle of a bunch of enemies and just killed them all. So <laughs> she can become a hard carry. And I didn't use a single Strength Booster on her, uh, and I can prove that. So in this run... Sorry, it's gonna manage items. So in this run, I'm actually sitting on two strength boosters, a seraph robe, spirit dust. I'm sitting on a bunch of upgrades. <laughs> so she's a hard carry without upgrades, and she does have a strength plus two ring equipped. I did not use uh, bond ring manipulation to create that. I just randomly created a bunch of bond rings, and I happened to get like one or two S rank rings. But I did create probably like I don't know, a hundred <laughs> rings or so. You know, so it's not a trivial amount of rings to create to get an S rank. Um, all right, so she has good growths. She's more geared towards speed. You can make use of her passive. She's a good early game carry. Late game, you can easily build her so that she still is relevant and has good damage. Uh, all right, so let's talk about her classes. So what are her best classes? So she actually could go into magic classes. She could go on mage, or I'm sorry, she could go on sage, mage knight and potentially even High Priest. So these are definitely viable on her because of her decent base magic growth and her good speed. She would actually be quite a decent Sage. Um, now one nice thing about her is it seems like she has higher base build than other mages. Yeah, I think like Anna is like five build. Maybe she's not, maybe she's, oh, let me check this, I'm curious. Yeah, yeah, so Anna on Mage Knight is one less build than Chloe on Mage Knight. So she has a little bit more build, so that would make her a little bit faster. And she also has, like, slightly better speed growth. So if you threw her on Mage Knight, she'd be insanely fast. And her magic would start to snowball to some degree, because she would be at 60% uh, magic growth. So that actually be viable. Uh, other options include just the stock, you know, Lance Griffin Knight. That's pretty viable. She gets access to staves. She gets S rank and spears, which only really matters for the last few chapters if you want to run specific weapons. Uh, but it's pretty solid. Lances have good base damage and accuracy, so I would say they're better than swords outside of her running Levin Sword. But her on Levin Sword, uh, it's going to take some time before the like weapons flip. So what do I mean by that? So like right now, her strength is higher than her magic by four points. So she would need. So let's actually go to her inventory. She would need a pretty a pretty strong Leaven Sword. It would need to be upgraded for it to deal as much damage as the Steel Lance does currently, but it also weighs more, so it'd slow her down. So she would have less doubling opportunity. Not by much, but definitely by a little bit, because Leaven Sword is, I think, 11 weight. So if we actually look at a Leaven Sword... Yeah, so this is a Leaven Sword plus 4. Uh, this one has its damage reduced by 1 from the engraving so the, this one has plus one weight this one has minus one weight uh, this one has plus one damage this one has minus one damage because of the engravings but it's 11 base weight and i think it starts out at 13 might so the steel lance would out damage this would out damage the Leaven sword uh, when hitting the thing it's supposed to be targeting so it's hitting things with like medium and low defense and Leaven sword wants to hit things with medium and low res so it would be heavier and double less frequently but over time it could become viable uh, especially with her 5% build, eventually she'll start getting points of build uh, every 20 levels on fixed growth. So that's an option for her as well. Uh, for other classes, uh, like Hero, 
you could like you can pretty much put her on most things. I would just recommend putting her on lances or axes or on some kind of magic thing to make use of her magic. I wouldn't put her on a tanking class. I feel like she's already tanky enough with her speed. Uh, you could put her on Wolf Knight. It wouldn't be the best thing. You could put her on Paladin. It would actually be decent. Uh, Paladin gets you more build and more strength. You do lose a little bit of speed on Paladin, but it does have 15% speed growth and 15% strength. So it kind of helps push her strength up. So Paladin would be like a grounded variant. Now you get the advantage of having some reposition thing pivot. Uh, you get a little bit more strength, you get a little bit more durability, and you get some more build. So this could be better for like a brave build. If you want to put like a brave lance on her, that could be a viable option. Uh, let's see what else we got. Wyvern is good on her as well. Uh, Wyvern has one more build than Griffin, but I believe Griffin has more speed. Yeah, so the funny thing about Wyvern versus Griffin is Griffin has two plus speed on Wyvern, so Wyvern's plus one build doesn't matter because Griffin still has one more speed on it, so it basically cancels out. Well, actually, it's a favor, a point in uh, Griffin Knight's favor because it has higher speed, so... Uh, Wyvern does have more strength, and it does have Air Raid, which can be used pretty effectively. It also has more defense, so you can run Wyvern. And as long as she has access to either, you know, Lance and Axe or Lance and Sword, you don't want to do the, the Sword and Axe because you don't get the benefit of her being on Lance. Uh, Wyvern does give her access to Levin Sword, but you can see she loses two points of magic, and on Wyvern... You have no magic modifier, so the upside of unlocking Sword on Wyvern is kind of negated by the fact that Levin's Sword would be pretty ineffective on this just due to the low stat and the low growth, because now it's just 35% growth. However, Wyvern does put her strength growth at 45% because it gives plus 20% strength growth. So there's definitely some pros and cons of putting her on Griffin versus Wyvern. Both are viable. And I would say those are probably her best options. Maybe Paladin is also really strong. And then if you want, you could put her on Sage or Mage Knight. Those would be fine. Putting her on Halberdier would be a waste because her speed is high enough that she usually doubles anyway. So she doesn't need Pincer Attack. So you're kind of just land blocking her or putting her at five move arbitrarily. Uh, Royal Knight could be interesting. Um, you do get one more build. Royal Knight is a weird one. It's kind of like a paladin that has access to staves, which is nice. It has one less uh, rank, so she would just be at A lances. Um, so let me check out its growths just to compare to the other classes. It's in a weird location on this list. Here it is. Here it is. All right. So Royal Knight, you get 5% HP, 10% strength, 15% magic, 15% dex, 15% speed. It's kind of just like random. It, feel, it feels like a kind of hybrid class. Um, the 15% speed is nice, the 15% magic. So if you put her on this, you'd probably be trying to do a, like a Flame Lance build, I would say, uh, because you would be at 50% magic growth on this. Uh, the magic is decent, actually, so this might be an option for her. The only thing you have to watch out for is Reforge just like siphoning health off of you if you want to fix a, break, a broken ally. Uh, but aside from that, this could be a good option for her. It would be a Flame Lance build. And you still could use other lances. Like you're not just only limited to Flame Lance. It still has decent build. You could still use like a Steel Spear and deal respectable damage. You do miss out on some speed. But the speed growth is decent, and this actually might be a pretty viable option for her. Now, something other people have said is that she's good on Martial Master. I personally haven't used this class much. It seems like it could be decent. Its main upside, its main draw is um, punching things, you know, getting, getting brave weapon effect. So this could be something that she's good at because she does have this kind of like mixed growth situation where she has... Decent growths on magic and strength. And when you add in something like Martial Master, it would increase her uh, magic growth to 20%, or I'm sorry, 55%, and it would increase her strength growth to 35%, which is decent because it, 
and uses both of those stats to calculate the damage for punching. So that would be kind of interesting. You could you could run that if you want to try some different thing out to have some fun. It seems like it could be good on her because she's fast. It does lose a lot of speed though. So quadding is kind of suspect. Uh, the build is decent. Seven build is nice. Um, high priest. So high priest has more speed, less build. Um, more magic. I would say if you want to punch things, martial master is probably the way to go. Weirdly, martial monk actually has more magic growth. It has 25%, whereas martial master has 20. So that's kind of strange, but it's interesting. Thief on her, I wouldn't recommend because she has lower strength. Thief, I think you want it to be on units who are fast but have high strength because their damage can fall off mid to end game unless you heavily invest in the thief. So you, you kind of want to have like either upgraded weapons or high base strength to compensate for their weapons at like lower might. Because uh, nothing feels worse than having a thief throw a single dagger because the enemy's too fast and then it does almost no damage. That's it just feels bad. But she, she could potentially be a decent thief. All right, so those are classes. And I kind of touched on the upgrades. But let's go over them quickly. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm sorry, those classes. We still need to talk about passives. All right, passives. I would say she wants Cantor, Momentum, and potentially Lance Power, but I don't know that you want Lance Power early. Uh, the idea behind Lance Power, so let's look at some of these. The idea behind Lance Power would be to boost her damage on like a Brave build. Uh, so here's so here's the here are the pros and cons of some of the main abilities she wants. So Cantor makes her flexible. If you are not running Sigurd on her early game, getting Cantor early is nice. Uh, she doesn't need Cantor. Most units don't need Cantor. You, like Cantor is objectively one of the best abilities for repositioning and mobility, and it allows your team to be very flexible. So you can't go wrong getting a unit Cantor. Uh, momentum is good for dive, for attacking. So if you want to be more aggressive and be a little bit more crazy, I would recommend getting Momentum. Uh, Lance Power. The first tier costs 1k. You get plus 2 attack on all lances, including flame lances. So you deal plus 2 damage with all lance attacks. And you also lose 10 of, or yeah, 10 avoid. And then lance power 2 costs 2k SP. And you lose still 10 avoid, but you gain plus 4 damage. So if you want to run some kind of brave build, you want to go for lance power. And just that's all you get. And then I believe lance power three cost 3k and you get like plus six damage so like there's definitely some lance power builds you could run that would be good momentum is good canter is good you could also run a void on her from marth that's pretty good early game and those are the ones i would recommend all right so that's classes passives let's talk about the weapon so early game you just hand her a steel lance with the sigurd upgrade and it consistently performs she will run one round most enemies and destroy them all right so let's go to refine really quick uh, iron weapons i would skip on her uh, javelin can be a decent option for her so like if you upgrade a javelin it's relatively cheap uh, early game i think there's better options to upgrade but it is decent its weight is low enough that she usually doubles with it spear i would avoid completely um, spear is way too heavy for her to double with it's just insanely heavy 15 weight it's just not it's very unlikely she'll double with spear but with javelin you can invest in it and she can double with it and it's decent, but I don't recommend prioritizing it early game. Early game priority, I would say is like Steel Lance, Steel Sword, and Leaven Swords. I think these pop off. I think those are the main things. I'm experimenting with some other things too, which I'm trying out Panettes, trying out some different builds for fun. Uh, but yeah, that's it for this one. That's it for Chloe. Uh, if I had to rank her in terms of effectiveness, I would say she's easily an S tier unit. The only things you have to really concern yourself with our late game her damage not being like super high and all you have to do is just run the right emblem ring on her and then i would still say she's still s tier because she has insanely high speed so that means she dodges effortlessly and she tends to double almost everything she attacks so the only thing that needs solved is the strength issue and early game that's easily done with a steel lance and if you can get that steel lance to plus five and even if you want to use an energy drop or two on her that'll make her relevance without an emblem ring. So like with zero strength from emblem rings, 
But easily, just throw a decent emblem ring on her that improves her strength, and that solves her problems. Uh, alternatively, you could use someone like Leaf to increase her build and then give her an upgraded Silver Spear. This will cost more to upgrade, but that's another way to fix her strength for late game. So early to mid game, solid S tier, late game, you just have to fix her and she stays in S tier, I think. Uh, but yeah, that's it for this one. Definitely like and subscribe if you find this useful. Definitely run Chloe. She's probably one of the best, if not... Well, I wouldn't say she's the best unit in the game. She's definitely one of the best units in the game. There's definitely units that are better, like Sadal. So yeah, peace.